A compelling detective story, a cloak and dagger action and a romantic drama, all these stories were taken from real life. The history of Kazakhstan is inseparable from the world history. Reflections on history, our version. The Potai Mystery. They have followed these well-traveled routes for over 30 years. There are pine groves, steppes, where feather grass grows on the banks of the Iman Burlik River and hungry mosquitoes contributing to the romanticism of notable excavations. Batai is one of the most famous archaeological sites in the world. Most likely, the origin of the Proto-Indo-European community can be traced to the Botai dwellers. They lived during an epoch of changes 6,000 years ago. They started using bronze instead of stones. Matriarchy replaced patriarchy. They saddled horses and left surprising artifacts. A clay mask was over the skull and when it was found in a separate niche of a dwelling. The Archaeological X-Files of the Potai Mystery, Episode 1. The truth is out there. Anthropologists had problems with determining the sex. It's interesting that in the preliminary plan, our neurosurgeons supposed that they had lived quite long after trepanation. The attempts to restore some instruments have been made, but it's very difficult to accomplish this task even using modern tools. Chapter 1. A Shamanistic Object Northern Kazakhstan region, Ayrtau district, one and a half kilometers southeast of Nikolsky village. Beginners, who are called moles, are students. They dig, make the soil friable, and sift it looking for artifacts. The representatives of the high archaeological level do the same. They all follow the absolute rule according to which everyone who comes to participate in the expedition first has to work with a spade. First, clear the walls like this. A very important all-union scientific symposium was held in 1983. It led to the appearance of the first X-Files. They hadn't even planned to excavate this area and everything was organized literally a day before the conference. My colleagues told me that it was enough, but I insisted on adding more, so they added another four square meters of land. By chance, anthropologists, students of the famous Gerasimov, started working on this small area. Anthropologists came here and they found it. Can you imagine? It was a very interesting phenomenon, too. It wasn't mystical, but probably it happened thanks to their great desire to do it. They found the burial mound almost immediately, and it was sensational. Eight buried people were found in Botai. A part of them were in a common burial ground. Another burial, containing a skull with a mask over it, was found in a niche of a dwelling. The anthropologist took the unusual find to Moscow and studied it thoroughly. Even professional specialists were surprised at the results. Ancient doctors had performed trepanations successfully 6,000 years ago. They performed operations on live people at the age of 11 to 13. Although it seems unbelievable, the patient lived after these fatal manipulations for 17 years. The most surprising fact is that they didn't let the opening of the skull heal. Probably they inserted a turned fang of a boar. As a result, the bone didn't grow over the opening. You know that bone tissue grows very quickly. Petropavlos, Northern Kazakhstan Local Area Museum. Objects under the Shaman codename. 
After returning from Moscow, the shaman was placed in the Botai Hall. According to the museum employees, the object isn't capricious and almost doesn't demonstrate any mystical powers. The artifact is treated respectfully here. It's a pity that it is in such a poor state of preservation. We try to treat it uh, carefully now. Do you call it a shaman when talking to each other? Well, it wasn't even our idea. The guys who studied it before gave it this nickname. The Soviet anthropologists couldn't determine if the shaman had been male or female. Besides, there was a third version. Most likely, it possessed both male and female features and was a hermaphrodite. Hermaphrodites were considered to be shamans or we could call them spiritualists. It was believed that they had unusual abilities. Researchers claim that some shamans were hermaphrodites. In ancient times, either mental or physical abnormalities became a reason to consider a person's select. The combination of both male and female features is part of a different people's mythology. For example, there were deities like Quetzalcoatl of pre-Columbian Mexico, Vedic Ardhanara Shivara, Ptah, the god of Memphis, and many others. There was the cult of Hermes and Aphrodite who were very popular in the Olympian religion. This cult derived from the mythology and religion of ancient Egypt. Incidentally, there's an ancient Kazakh saying which literally translates as having a hole in the head, which means having unusual abilities. Chapter 2. A Mysterious Patient Materials of All Union Archaeological Conference, 1983. In the very beginning, nobody doubted that the Botai skull belonged to a priest because of the circumstances under which it was found, which proved this fact. After death, they separated the head together with cervical vertebrae from the body, put a clay mask on it, and put it into a niche of a dwelling. In addition, it's doubtful that after the trepanation, an unknown Botai dweller could become a warrior. Even nowadays, after trepanation, people as a rule need to be cared for and should live in special conditions. It's clear that having undergone this operation, a person becomes disabled. Moreover, the rehabilitation continued all their lives since they didn't let the wound heal. If they took the fang from the opening in the skull or moved it, it caused constant pain leading to epileptic seizures and hallucinations. Another interesting fact is that trepanations were often performed in many countries over many centuries. Castle Hill, Vishprem, Hungary. Lakšo Dešo, local history museum. The Avars and Hungarians performed trepanations. They took away a part of the skull. Usually those who suffered from headaches or something else underwent such operations. Doctors still don't know how they carried out this operation on an area containing so much blood. There are so many blood vessels. Yes, there are. We still don't know how they performed these operations. Even now, archaeologists find skulls like Botai. One of the last finds in East Kazakhstan proves this fact. It dates back to the late 8th century AD. Besides magnificent weapons, we found traces of trepanation. It means that they performed trepanations of the skull. Incidentally, in ancient times, trepanation was performed to treat illnesses and reduce intracranial pressure. However, in these cases, the openings were made in different parts of the skull. The Botai find is unique because they didn't let the opening heal.
Those who performed trepanation were good doctors. They also could carry out other operations which are considered to be performed only in modern times. It's interesting that trepanation had a high survival rate in ancient times. Almost 90% of those who underwent trepanation survived. They rarely suffered from post-operative complications. At the same time, the question how it was performed remains unanswered. Chapter 3, The Trepanation Operation. This is a prototype of an ancient drill. Of course, a real ancient drill looked quite different. For example, its blade was made of stone. As for the drill itself, it wasn't made of iron, but of silicon. Some scientists suppose that the Stone Age neurosurgeons used such a drill to perform the trepanation of the mysterious Botai skull. First, in order to start this drill, you need to rotate it a bit and then press lightly. Now you can do it easily, but I don't think this process was so easy 6,000 years ago. You shouldn't forget that an unknown specialist didn't work on an ordinary bone object, but drilled skull bones. The patient survived the surgery. However, archaeologists haven't found anything similar to an operating room yet. Archaeology camp, Nikolsky village. The room where artifacts are kept. We rarely see medical instruments. Mainly, they were passed on to others. When Botai dwellers left the settlement, they would take their instruments. This could be the reason why we can't find a lot of medical, especially surgical instruments. If there was a special place, did any instruments remain? I think it was performed in public. Despite the fact that a patient was shouting because it was painful, they didn't have any anesthetics, did they? Could they be given any intoxicating drugs? Apparently, they had some anesthetics because there was pain a person couldn't endure. There are two openings here. The most dangerous area is the back of the head, where the skull bones are connected. A modern doctor, a neurosurgeon, asked me how it had been possible. If doctors start operating this area today, it will cause immediate death. Let's repeat that no archaeological traces of operating rooms and anesthetics have been found. As for medical instruments, the information we have is based on supposition. Probably they didn't use silicic drills, but used bone instruments to apply so-called scraping technique. Celtic surgeons used this method to perform trepanations on their fellow tribesmen's skulls. However, there are some different versions too. They could have had copper instruments. We know that they had copper and we found copper plates. Scientists hold the opinion that in most cases they use copper to perform trepanation. They heated copper to such a temperature that it melted, dropped it on a certain place and left it for 20 seconds. As a result, this dot appeared there. Epilogue. In waiting mode. Archaeological X-Files are files which nobody tries to hide. On the contrary, people have been trying to uncover their secret for 30 years. A year ago, samples of the Batai skull were taken to conduct a test genetic examination. However, we haven't seen its results yet. The wait is on. In any case, they have a lot of secrets and it'll take a lot of time to uncover them. Thus, they take spades and keep excavating. 
There are about 150 dwellings in the settlement, so it'll take about 150 years more to study this Botai culture. Archaeologists are confident that one day all the secrets will be uncovered.